In his 2015 book, Saving Capitalism for the Many, Not the Few, Robert Reich, former Secretary of Labor under President Bill Clinton, says America's middle class is shrinking and that a new oligarchy is taking its place. My friends, we are on the way to becoming a two-tiered society, composed of a few winners and a larger group of Americans left behind, whose anger and whose disillusionment is easily manipulated. Once unbottled, mass resentment can poison the very fabric of society, the moral integrity of a society. Replacing ambition with envy, replacing tolerance with hate. Today, the targets of those raid, that rage are immigrants and welfare mothers and government officials and gays and an ill-defined counterculture. But as the middle class continues to erode, who will be the targets tomorrow? Now there is a new Netflix documentary by the same name detailing the so-called growing wealth disparity. Director Jacob Kornbluth joins us now from San Francisco. Jacob, welcome. Thank you for having me. Well, you say that our economic system is broken. Can you just explain that first of all and what you think are the contributing factors? Sure. Well, what we see is that over uh, the last 40 years, since about the mid-1970s, we've seen uh, growing economic inequality. That's inequality of income and wealth. Uh, where more and more of the money is going to the top 1% of, uh, of Americans. But in addition to that growing economic inequality, which really isn't so much in debate anymore, is that we see in the film, we track a growing uh, divide among the political power that tracks with that growing economic power. So that as we see growing uh, inequality of income and wealth, we also see growing concentration of political power. And this is the power to write the rules of the economic system to benefit the wealthy and that's so that they make more money and we eventually see a vicious cycle of growing uh, economic inequality feeding uh, political power which then increases growing additional economic inequality. And that's really the problem that our system is facing today. And so what kinds of people did you talk to for the documentary? Well, you know, going into the film, we started making this film before uh, the president, the last presidential election. So what we, start, what we wanted to make clear was that this isn't a story of Democrats or Republicans. This is a story of power. And what we see is that people across the, uh, the political divide uh, experience this um, this power inequality equally. So on the right, you see the Tea Party in reaction to um, in reaction to a system that they feel is unjust. And what you on the left, you saw the Occupy Wall Street movement, and then you see the movement to support Bernie Sanders. All of which is this kind of anti-establishment energy across the political spectrum. So we wanted to talk to those people on this tour. We talked to conservatives. We talked to people on the left who thought capitalism shouldn't be saved at all, and they didn't like capitalism, uh, just the, the name capitalism made them want to reject uh, the, the economic system full stop. And we talked to business leaders, we talked to deeply conservative politicians like David Bratt from, uh, from um, Virginia, who is called uh, the second most conservative member on the House by several, uh, by several uh, sites that analyze such things. So we didn't want to just talk to people in one political, uh, you know, category. And what we saw is that across the spectrum, people were experiencing the same thing. This uh, growing economic inequality equals uh, increased political power equals uh, a problem for our economic system. And Jacob, I'm curious, you've talked about growing up in New York City and in rural Michigan. How do you think your own socioeconomic yeah. background affected your approach? Well, you know, as a filmmaker, one of the unique things is I work in issue films, uh, uh, and often this is seen through partisan lens. Are you conservative or are you liberal? And when I grew up in New York City, I grew up in what you might call a very left-wing part of the country. But then I moved for high school and for middle school to rural Michigan, a place that was deeply conservative and which all of my neighbors um, uh, 
I would say, you know, fell on the conservative end of the spectrum. And I think when I became a filmmaker, this really changed the way I see things because I wasn't just seeing it through the eyes of uh, what you might call the liberal coastal community mm -hmm. uh, of New York City. I also lived in the red states in the Midwest. I saw the world through pe those people's eyes, and I have a lot of empathy for that. And as a filmmaker, I really want to bring that to this issue because I really don't feel it's about um, it's about where you come from necessarily. And I feel like you know people who are on both sides of this uh, on the, uh, the political spectrum have a lot of valid arguments when they say that the system isn't working for them. Yeah, because really, it isn't a really important point. Well, Secretary Reich says in the film, many think that capitalism isn't working for them, as you've just said, and that frustration is continuing to grow. We see that. Why do you think that is? Well, uh, what we see is an economic system, and we trace this in, in the film, that over 40 years, rule by rule, uh, legislation by legislation, piece of legislation by piece of legislation, the rules have uh, benefit somebody and they hurt somebody else. And over those 40 years, they increasingly benefit the wealthy and the powerful, and they hurt regular Americans. And what you see as a result of that is that um, that anger and frustration is building. Now, this is turned into the anti, the the sort of uh, anti-establishment sentiment that led to Bernie Sanders on the left and to Donald Trump on the right in the last presidential election. But broadly speaking, we're looking at a systemic problem in which uh, the rules of the economic system feel rigged to most Americans, and that this in turn makes it has, has also lead them to feel like they don't have a political voice. So a lot of what we see in terms of the anger and the frustration across the political spectrum comes from the same root, which is the economic system is, I think, broken and not working for most Americans, sort of rule by rule, piece by piece, including, you might say, just today, the tax bill that the, that the House of Representatives passed uh, on the Republican side that I think, again, is, is, is largely a tax break for corporations at a time when corporations are doing better than they've done in a generation. Like The real problem that we need to address with tax reform is not uh, corporations needing more help. It's, it's working class Americans who haven't gotten a raise over the last generation. So then, of course, the question comes, what kind of solutions then do you and Secretary Reich see? Um, how do we as a society reverse some of these things? Well, I think the deep question is, how do you stay optimistic in the face of a system that um, that does it, that seems to be getting worse and worse for a lot of regular uh, working Americans? And I think the way to stay positive, first of all, is to look at history and to say that in the last Gilded Age, the last time economic inequality was so uh, wide, in the late 1880s and 1890s, a lot of people rose up starting in about 1900, and we had the first progressive era, era in America. And then in the 1920s, after the crash of the Great Depression, we had a lot of rules be rewritten to help out working people. And those changes lasted a generation. What we see over American history is that we capitalism occasionally goes off the rails, but Americans pull, pull themselves up and they fix it. And so I think... What I hope people realize is that they can fix this, that it's something that the economy is not like the weather, it's not something that just happens to you. It's something that um, we can change. And if the rules could be written to help out wealthy corporations, they can now be rewritten to help out regular people. But it's gonna take a lot of work and it's gonna take people uh, taking to the streets and it's gonna take some kind of a revolution. All right, Jacob Kornbluth. Jacob, thank you very much for your time. Really appreciate it. Thank you for having me.